In the wake of a CNBC investigation into stolen cryptocurrency, one trading platform boosted its customer service. But many say that didn't go far enough. Welcome to CNBC After Hours, I'm Mackenzie Segalos. First things first, let's talk about the markets. Stocks dip today as investors wait for some key data coming out tomorrow. We'll get a look at the state of inflation, a peek at the Fed's economic response, and the start of earnings season, with the big banks reporting in the morning. So ahead of all of that, the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ all traded lower. Crypto prices dipped today too. As of 4 p.m. Eastern, Bitcoin pulled back around 4%, although it's still near its highest level since May. Ethereum and XRP are in the red as well. Also, here are some other numbers you should know. First up, 4.3 million. The Great Resignation doesn't look like it will end anytime soon. A record 4.3 million people quit their jobs in August, according to data from the Department of Labor. The report has been tracking job openings since 2000 and found that about a quarter million more people left their job in August than they did in July. That being said, job openings still fell by 600,000 during the month. Next, 1.9 billion. Remember those exploding EV batteries GM recalled? Well, it looks like LG will have to pay for them. The company agreed to reimburse General Motors for the faulty batteries to the tune of $1.9 billion. The automaker had to recall its flagship electric car, the Bolt, earlier this year due to fire risk. Lastly, 15. Pfizer recently got approval for its booster shot for certain Americans. Now it's Moderna and J&J's turn. An FDA advisory group will meet on Thursday to decide whether a booster of either vaccine is even necessary. Just today, FDA staff refused to take a stance on whether to back these booster shots. As investing in cryptocurrency has skyrocketed, so have major problems in keeping those investments safe. Customers of Coinbase, the country's largest crypto platform, are angry with the company's customer support, which is supposed to provide help, but has just led to more frustration. Damon Javers has a CNBC investigation into the crypto nightmare. I was kind of like panicked, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Eric and Molly Richardson say they saved nearly $1.1 million worth of cryptocurrency in a Coinbase account. But then in July, Eric got an alert on his phone. The message said someone had logged onto their account. Eric clicked on the text, logged in, and soon received an email that their two-factor authentication, which verifies security settings, had been changed. He was like in a state of shock, so I tried to help him. I tried to stay calm and I, you know, looked up Coinbase online trying to figure out how to get a hold of their customer service. Like thousands of other Coinbase customers, the Richardsons say they got nowhere when they tried to get immediate help. That's because the company didn't offer any kind of live phone support. Email was the only option. And within the 20 minutes that we sent the email, somebody had done a 110 different transactions, sending out about 21 Bitcoin. In all, the hackers stole some $700,000 of the couple's savings. No They're not the only ones. As CNBC reported in August, cryptocurrency holders across the country have been victimized by hackers who drain their accounts. And then they can't even get anyone on the phone to resolve the issue. Coinbase said in August that it had finally set up a phone number for customers to call if their account had been taken over, but that doesn't seem to be fixing the problem. Customers told us the live support was useless, a joke, and it was only for accounts that are actively locked. So we wanted to see what would happen when the Richardsons called Coinbase's new customer support line. I'm gonna call and see if I can get my account finally unlocked. and. Maybe should I ask if they can, will give me my money back? A Coinbase agent does answer. Well, I got locked out of my account um, about two months ago and I haven't been able to get back in. Somebody stole 21 Bitcoin out of it. The agent tells Richardson he actually doesn't have access to his case file, instead saying he should respond to a Coinbase email he'd already responded to. A Coinbase spokesperson says, we recognize the challenges some of our customers have experienced with their Coinbase accounts. Improving our customer experience continues to remain a top priority. Eric says his big regret is not doing more to safeguard his Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Chainlink before the theft, which he thinks happened because that text alert was likely a phishing attack to steal his information. 
One option he considered but didn't follow up on was a hardware device used for cold storage of cryptocurrencies. I beat myself up every day because I have my friend's voices in my head. Eric put it on cold storage and I just didn't. Nicole DeSico, who helps clients secure their cryptocurrency, says cold storage is virtually hack-proof. You get a private key, which is like a password, to buy and sell crypto, and you store that key offline. When you keep your funds in cold storage, you own those funds, you have access to them, they're offline, away from hackers. Of course, the problem with even that solution is owners can lose their passwords, or something can go wrong with the device itself. As far as the Richardsons, soon after our interview, Coinbase restored access to their account. They also received a credit from Coinbase, but nowhere near what they lost. Just $500 worth of Bitcoin. Oh, it felt like they kicked sand in my face. That's what made me think, is there even anybody senior at Coinbase looking at this? Coinbase told the Richardsons it won't refund their savings because the company was not responsible for the hack. Customers have filed more than 12,000 complaints against the company with government and consumer agencies since 2016. Meanwhile, an additional 1,500 complaints have been filed since our story first aired in August, mostly over customer service. All right, before we go, here is one last thing to know. Southwest had a brutal weekend of flight cancellations, and it's trying to get its act together. Today, the airline canceled around 90 flights, or just about 2% of its schedule. On Sunday, though, the airline canceled 1,100 flights. Southwest blamed bad weather and air traffic control issues for the cancellations. CEO Gary Kelly did come on CNBC to assure customers the airline was doing all that it could to stabilize operations. You can read about the Southwest Airlines chaos, along with everything else we talked about today by going to CNBC.com or downloading the CNBC app. That's all for today's edition of After Hours, but we'll be back here every Tuesday and Thursday, so see you then.